Call the meeting to order. Uh, before we get to the uh, public piece of this, if I could just make a, a couple of general comments. Um, at our meeting in, in June, it was a little different meeting. I had some people come up to me and say that my, some of my comments were too strong. Some of my, my comments were not strong enough. Some of my comments are about, about right. It's kind of like the three bears. Um, and I had one person say to me that I had an out-of-body experience because they weren't, they weren't used to me uh, being as animated as I was, I guess. Um, let me just make a couple of comments about that. First of all is I, I recognize everybody's, uh, you know, opinions and I respect everybody's opinions and their right to have opinions whether they agree or disagree. I, I understand all that. Um, a li little background on that. For about a, um, nine or ten months before that, we meeting the Recreation Commission had spoken to a couple of different groups in town uh, one group had concerns about the uh, the use of Brody Park South we understood all that we listened to them we addressed them um, we, we also conferred with uh, with youth football and at first they were reluctant to you know join join some of the conversations which I understood they felt that they had the right to be up there um, the long, long and the short of it is, everybody agreed to come to the table and, and discuss uh, different opinions, different concerns, some remedies uh, that we thought, you know, were, were, uh, were going to benefit everybody involved. Um, and then at that meeting in June, that afternoon, I'm sitting in my office and I get a, an email from an attorney um, regarding planning and zoning. And to be honest with you, it just, it just frustrated me. Um, because I, I really thought that we were we were starting to make headway uh, and again I, I, I recognize that everybody has their opinion and right to do whatever they wish to do within reason um, it just caught me at a, at a wrong time basically so if any of my comments at the meeting in June uh, offended anybody uh, it certainly was not my intent um, because it's just not not my personality so um, but moving forward um, football began about a month ago. Youth football began about a month ago, and uh, Dennis, Dan, and, and I have been have been making periodic uh, trips by to um, drive bys uh, to see how things are going. And uh, to the best of our knowledge, from what we can what we can determine, uh, the parking is certainly as much better. They're not on the street. Uh, from what we can see, the kids are not crossing the street. Uh, it looks more uniform. Um, it looks certainly much safer, um, which was our main concern. And I think the concern on the part of, you know, obviously a lot of the residents that came before us. And that was, that was huge for, for us, obviously. Uh, I've actually had emails from independent people, people that are not involved with recreation, not involved with youth sports, not, not involved with Brody Park South um, folks. 
and it's actually been complimentary that it's it's better than it used to be. It's much better than it used to be. And you know, I, I applaud all people in, involved. Uh, you know, football for taking the recommendations and running with them. Brody Park South people for bringing all the concerns to us. Um, those things are all important. The Recreation Commission spent a lot of time and a lot of energy trying trying to make things happen and make things work. So, um, you know, as, as far as as far as I I can see and I can tell that things are things are moving forward and are much safer than they than they were um, a year ago. So, that being said, we'll move on to the next part of our agenda, which is the opportunity for public to address and. I know you have to Thank go. So. Yeah. yeah, there's okay. a meeting upstairs. Yeah. That's uh, fine. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just want to. Um, um, I appreciate what you just said. By the way, John, I, 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 just, I, I can't I really hate, hear you. I, I personally hate to be caught on a, you know, unawares or mm. you know, like being hit by the side of the head, and I, I can appreciate that. So thank you for saying what you just did. I appreciate that. Um, well, I, I'm here because um, I, d I do I do have a concern in that um, I naturally travel with my camera wherever I go. It's part of the work that I've taken on reporting on town events, whatever they happen to be, and I want to. I want to specifically address one last Friday where I left work early for me, left work at four. I went home, I took one of my two dogs, a little, a little, um, little dog, very gentle, because I had my camera and I had a plan to photograph the changes in the unload fields. I've been doing this every week. It's part of what I like to do. Okay, so I went there at 4.15 by the time I got to the field. At 4.15, the cheerleaders were there. I had no idea. Friday afternoon, 4.15. I go to the field, and of course, reporter's instinct, I take a picture. So I'm in, I'm in the parking lot, I'm taking a picture, I put my camera to my side again, I walk down with my dog, we have a loop that we do outside the exterior part of the, uh, the, the park. So I head down to my loop, which is not where the cheerleaders are. And the cheerleader, uh, the, the woman in charge, and I don't know names and I don't want to name names, approached me very, very upset and just started ranting at me. It's weird. What? It's really weird. You know, you can't go taking pictures of our daughters. That's really weird. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm here for a walk. I didn't expect you here. What time can I come here where I don't have to have this interaction with you? And all she said was, Rec is aware that we're here. It's fine by them. So 4.15, I'm in a town park, and I'm being called weird. Now, I just w wanted to make you aware of that. You know, I don't think taking photos is weird. It's just part of what I do. Okay? If they think it's weird, and I'll just put this out to you guys, okay? Here you have parents who are approving for their daughters to be cheerleaders, okay? Cheerleaders wear skimpy costumes compared to what the boys wear, all right? I'm just putting that out to you. Now, if a woman going on to, into a town park <coughs> where the girls are all clothed, and I don't, I, I didn't even care, you know, I just took a picture. I, I don't care who it is, you know? And I'm not going to show any kids' faces if I think that the parents are not going to want me to do that. And I don't identify kids. So I just wanted to put that out to you. You know, I know you say it's improved as far as the parking, you know. But it depends what time you go there and who's around and whatever. But I just, that one experience, and you can hear, it really upset me. And I just, you know, I just would like to know, when can I go there with my dogs, take pictures of a place that I really love, without having to fend off that kind of an interaction? Which, believe me, I, w I wanted to turn around and go home. It is a town public park. You have as much right to be there with your dog. There's no signs that dogs are not allowed. Well, I understood that. At any time during the day when the park is open. Individuals' reactions to other individuals, certainly this committee nor any town committee can get involved in. If you believe that whatever 
interface you have, reactions you have with people that you meet on public properties are sufficiently offensive to involve the authorities, then call the police and get them involved so that they can resolve it. Those are interpersonal activities among individuals. Whether you find them at Brody South or you're down in Brown's Corner during a, a, a football game or a soccer game or a baseball game and someone comes up and has a confrontation and says, you know, you don't belong here because you're from another town. Those are all interpersonal activities. This commission can't get involved in those kind of things. It's a town park. They have a right to have the practices and be there, whether it be soccer, football, cheerleading, basketball, bocce ball, you walking and taking pictures. It's a town park. So now you're What other you're people saying, within okay. that park choose to confront each other is between, has to be between those individuals. Okay, and if so it I reaches a point where it is extremely <laughs> offensive, then the proper authorities need to get involved, but it's not this commission's response. We have no enforcement activity. I knowledge. was told that the Rec Commission was aware that they were there. It was a, it was it was presented to me as though they had the blessing of the Rec Commission to be up there at four o'clock when my understanding was from six o'clock on. They Normally, can they can be there at ten o'clock in the morning. They can be there so, at so what is six it? o'clock so what in the morning. Is, what, is, what is your what is your talk in, in it August? It is a public in park. Um, in August, okay, you said football could be there between six and eight. I I went with that. If I go at four Okay. Football can, it's a public park, Maria. Any, so six any, eight, any okay. resident in this town can okay. be there at any time of day they choose to be. Okay. We don't know if there was a conflict at six and they had the day before just because most of the kids could be there. We don't know, Maria. You know, I, I, um, I, I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill here, actually. I, I, I really don't. Um, you know, the kids, the kids were there and they were doing their cheerleading exercise. There's a lot of room up there. Boy, there's a ton of acreage. Um, so, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, there were some words said and feelings hurt. Um, you know, we just we hope it doesn't happen again. But the answer, I, I mean, we don't, there's really not a lot we can do about, you know, those kind of conversations, those kind of incidents. Um, it's not really within our, our jurisdiction, so to speak. We wouldn't um, ask them it happens, to leave it happens more than you ask you. Think. It's a public park. I've, I've, been, a, I've been asked to change my time to walk. Not in that by park. this commission. Well, if I go there at 5.30 or 6, okay, I've had interactions that have been very, very negative. Then call the proper authorities to react to it. You're, it's you're not, not proper authority. It's not within this commission's purview. It's a town park. Anybody can use it. Now, certainly, when someone is using it, in a certain area, when you are walking in a certain area, taking your pictures, probably a three foot radius around you is your area to do your thing in. Should someone push you out of the way because they want to do their thing in that spot, well, you were there first. I mean, it's, it's a first come, first serve kind of issue in all of the parks in town. For the farmer's market, I mean, they have it Friday nights. But that doesn't prevent someone from going down there, taking pictures and walking around the park during the farmer's market. I understand what you're trying to get at that, but right now, exclusive news between 5.30 and 8.30, 8.30, has been given to Coldwell. That's how they look at it. If I go there at 4 o'clock, I would like to do that. You walk my dog without being approached. That was the one point I wanted to make here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And that was, wasn't the only interaction, by the way. Guys. I'm going to follow up on that because I respectfully disagree with what you're saying then. We've gone through this issue for quite a bit. And at the end of the May meeting, fact-finding committee meeting, you had come up with some guidelines for <coughs> youth football and cheers activities up in Burley Park South. And the guidelines were formally accepted at the June meeting where it said, it's on record and it was put into the minutes that football would be there from 6 to 8 they would clean up at 7.45 and be out. You're on record for saying that. So this commission has given pretty much exclusive rights to football to be there. Now, last week, cheerleading was there at 4. That's but and again, again, but it doesn't but prevent because, you from because being there. we again, said they were there from 6 to 8, we did not say 
those are the only hours that you can use the park. The park is open to the public. So what are you saying public. then? What are you saying? From 6 to 8, football will be using the area that, that they tend to use, but that doesn't mean... I mean, I went up there, sat down under the pine trees on one of the benches at 5.30 one day. I had a book. Football came, did their practicing. I sat there, read my book. I left at 7.30. I did my thing in the park at the same time they were there. Now, it is a public park. Should any sport, should anybody in this town, sports, individuals, whatever, want to use that park any time after sunrise, they're entitled to use it. If cheerleading wants to hold a practice from sunrise for two hours in the morning, they can. It's a public park. That's they can do it. That is now organized it activity. Doesn't, it doesn't make and any difference. And that's a very different requirement because all of a sudden now you're crossing over into that special exception requirement that planning and zoning is obligated to fulfill. Oh. Now you're on record for stating that football is going to be there. So now you've changed the parameters of this, and I'd like to know. I haven't changed like, the yes. parameters. Yes, it's all, all the parks in town are public parks. They can be used by the residents of this town for right, whatever they want. Then let me ask you to relocate the football guidelines. to another park. I understand that request. I've gone by Browns Corner, no activity. I've gone by Antolini, no activity. Brody Park North, no activity. Okay. Now, these are areas that are much more appropriate. In your and opinion, Heinz, not necessarily Absolutely. in football's opinion. Anybody Soccer chooses to practice in a certain area. It's their choice. They have asked You have to limited access there. for vehicles. You have, you're very far from the primary roads up there. And these are all issues that we've discussed. Correct. But I would like to make this commission aware that back in June, you set up parameters to help mitigate the differences between football and the neighbors. And the parameter said, six to eight, you're out of there by eight. Last Friday, there did were the 60 plus did the cars on the say, road in the field. Did the parameter say that they could not practice prior to six o'clock? You never said that. So now, all of a sudden, you're interjecting new parameters to this. No. Yeah. I just asked the Heinz, did the conversation or parameters or whatever you want to call them that you are referring to say that football or any other organization could not use the park prior to 6 p.m. Did you say did that? It, did that? Was that in that? You're, you're discussing something that you, you feel you understand. Absolutely. Within and that you understanding, led us, you led the was it to said... That. Was it said that you cannot use the park? And you did not bring that up as a possibility at that point either. All right. So we also addressed that cheerleading could use the other park as well. So and that was one of the guidelines too. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. You know, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. No, I don't either. Um, I would just I, like I to think, bring I, again, forth I think what your recommendations There's been were. significant improvements over, over the past year. I don't know if they're using a 415 every day. I doubt that. No, I think this is yeah. a recent I thing. I think it was just a, to be, a, I, an exception kind of situation. So. Uh, so, anyway, I thank you. I understand. Thank you. Hey, guys. Mr. Chairman, just a question about your agenda. Is the Brody South Study Committee on the agenda? Yes, you are. I don't see it. Yeah, you're going to be under other business stuff. We'll At the end? We'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Actually, I may jump. You might jump it up. <laughs> That'd be kind. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, as far as things are going up at Brody South, I think they've been going fantastic this year. Um, things have been very smooth. Uh, we have people out there helping with the parking, get people in and out. Um, the kids are on the field, not hanging out in the parking lot. A lot of things that we had issues with last year have been rectified. Um, in terms of people using the park when football's there, people walk their dogs to the practice every night. So I, I'm not quite sure where people are feeling excluded. We never push anybody out. There has been an issue with people with video cameras and, and still cameras taking pictures of the kids from the street. That happened the first couple of nights of practice. Um, parents, kids, and coaches were very sensitive to that. The kids were actually very upset by it. I don't blame them. Because uh, they didn't know what was going on, which maybe precipitated what happened with Maria the other day. Um, and that she took a picture of the kids, and they were, again, hyper aware of people taking pictures of them. You know, what happens, happens. Is the confrontation occurred, I, you know. <laughs> 
from what Maria says and from what I heard from the coaches, something in between happened. You know, it doesn't sound all that dramatic, but um, some phone calls were made, and I called town hall on that too to find out. You know, is it okay for people to be taking pictures of the kids without permission? It is. You're in a public place. There's no expectation of privacy. Nothing can be done in either direction. So as much as I'm dealing with irate parents, you know, some of which have, have specific privacy issues around adoption issues and things like that, there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to keep everybody calm and say just ignore the people with the cameras. It's been difficult. It's been difficult. But, you know, we're, we're trying just to soldier on and, and, and move through it. There might be a problem if the pictures of those children are publicized. For, for profit, it becomes an issue then. It's more of a profit issue, and, and that's more of a, a civil matter. Um, but in terms of a, a, a criminal matter, there's, there's nothing that can be done. Mm. Um, people are entitled. If you're in a public place, people can take pictures of you. If they use it for profit later on, that's a whole different story. Um, we explored it. Um, because, you know, again, I, I had to on, on the behalf of, of, of the parents that were, that were complaining. I let everybody know. Just let it go. There's nothing you can do. Let it go, and, and hopefully it'll stop. Um, but there was there was certainly another side to that as to why people were so um, should we say hyper vigilant as to some of the pictures. Um, on the positive side, though, lots of people are coming through every day with their dogs. People are sitting around. I know you guys have been up. The noise level seems to be dramatically reduced this year. Um, we're playing two two teams on the other side of the trees, like uh, Dan suggested, and that's working out well. Actually, the coaches really appreciate that. Um, that is going to lead us to having two sets of lights this year, though, um, in order to keep that going on. Uh, shouldn't be an issue with the other set of lights on the other side of trees. Um, and we're looking at uh, a whisper generator to keep it quiet. So I don't think there's much of an issue there. But uh, if you have any questions, direct questions, about what's going on right now. Thanks, Steve. Sure. Hey, Mel, Rick, you're going to be with Dan and Jean. Is that okay? Um, Approval of minutes from the last meeting. I wasn't here, so you probably should take, take care of that. So moved, Dan. I second. All in favor? All right. Okay, Dan, before we get to your, your report and correspondence and um, commission report, what uh, one of the main topics of the of tonight's meeting <coughs> is the Brody Park South Subcommittee that Dan Eddy was, uh, was chairman of. And Rick Bernike was on the Committee, I was on the committee, and Gene Cronor was behind me. Was on the committee, so I'm going to ask Dan and Allison. and Rick. Uh, Allison. I have. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Dan and and Rick and Gene to kind of. We a couple of committee. years ago, the Rec Commission was approached by Youth Sports and the seniors for use of Brody South in a more organized, formal manner, and the Rec Commission felt that we needed to have substantial input before we made any recommendations on that. So we set up a subcommittee to study the use of Brody Park South. Um, we decided that we wanted to get involved all of the most, uh, all of the parties that, that seemed to the Rec Commission to have the highest interest in Brody South. So that included the Rec Commission, the U Sports, who came to us. Friends of Brody has been very active up there mostly in Brody North, but we felt that the Brody group, they should they should have some input in it. Conservation Commission has been active up there. The Open Space Commission is certainly active. And we asked uh, the seniors to be involved. Each of those groups um, sent the representative. Um, and since I was appointed by this group to organize this whole thing, I was on there hopefully as an independent. Um, I'm getting more ways on because I don't know how many I make. <laughs> and um, the, the members are listed there. Gene Cronauer from Open Space, Allison Murdoch from Conservation, Karina Hughes from Friends of Brody, um, Rick Bernanke from New Sports, John Nashie from the Rec Commission, and in essence we doubled that because I was the organizer of it. Hopefully, I was independent. Um, and the seniors left the group very early on, so their chair remained vacant. For two years, we spent a lot of time studying not only Brody South, and the initial feelings were, is there a better place in town for it than Brody Park? Um, 
access is tough. Um, it would require you know, some substantial overhauling. So were that to be our recommendation, we expanded our, our charter a little bit, saying, look, if we're going to recommend that Brody South not be the location, it is incumbent upon us to have alternative locations. Otherwise, you could take each location separately in town, turn them all down, and now you got no locations. About six months ago, the, rec the uh, first selectman, we were re coming very close to a decision, and the first selectman stepped in and said he wanted to use Antolini. So that created an alternative location for a recreation field large enough to accommodate both soccer, which is wider than football, and football, which is longer than soccer. And we need, this, this, this commission has decided years, a few years ago, and we've been looking at it regularly ever since then, we need a flat level playing space of those dimensions because Brown's Corner is over capacity. And we have teams, New Hartford teams playing out of town. Um, quick recap, and I'm gonna move on quickly, but uh, fall baseball, frequently plays in Torrington because they conflict with activities that are going on at Brown's Corner. Travel soccer frequently has to play in Norfolk because there's a conflict with activities at Brown's Corner. Um, so we need the space. We have no legitimate girls softball field. The girls are playing on a little league field. The dimensions and the size of the mound are all very different. Um, and we have no, without disturbing Brown's corners so much that it would not be a good soccer or football facility, we have no facility for adult softball. Which certainly, if football and soccer were not using Brown's corner to the extent they are, you could put another infield down there and, and have a legitimate adult softball playing surface, but then that would ruin it for, for teams that need grass as their playing surface. So our young adults have to go out of town to play softball. And all of the surrounding towns have their own participants, so they limit the number of out-of-towners that can play. We need the space. At any rate, after the selectmen decided that Antolini would be the spot, we had pretty much come to a conclusion anyway. Gene handed out one of the reports, one of the sources we used. If you had a chance to look at it, that's fine. Um, in, in coming up with our recommendation. And at our last meeting, which was May 17th, uh, the committee came up with this recommendation and disbanded. It was proposed by Rick Bernanke and seconded by um, Karina Hughes. Um, and we recommend to this committee, to the Recreation Committee, that they seriously consider that the town of New Hartford place a permanent conservation easement on the 152-acre property known as Brody South with the following areas as shown on a map that I didn't bring. The forest section should be set aside to remain as it is forested under the stewardship plan adopted by the town of New Hartford and we have to locate the date. Dan, um, it's 2005 to 6. That's that was what 2005. Allison gave me today. We want to protect the wildlife habitat meadow area um, in accordance to the plan of conservation that the Conservation Commission has in place. And that's currently, if you go up there, you'll see that there is a border area of taller grass between the road and the wooded area. And then the, mo the currently mowed portion would remain mowed and in a park-like manner to be used by townspeople um, as a town park. That's probably eight to 10 acres, I would guess, right now. Well, probably six to eight acres mm -hmm. um, is currently being mowed and used as a park in a more park-like setting. Um, we would work out the, the details of the conservation easement um, with open space, they have access to people that design these easements um, to come up with, uh, with proper wording so that the, the land is maintained in its current state, 
but we do not want to restrict it so that future generations um, may want to put up an educational building somewhere on the land. So we don't want to restrict what townspeople may want with that 152 acres 50 years from now. So the, the, the easements would be designed along those lines. I've handed this out for everybody so that they can take it and read it, can you explain get a, a feeling about for it. it. Maybe Gene, you might be the best one to and, explain. Um, and Come. next meeting, oh, sorry, Beth. yeah, that's right. And next meeting, probably go in depth discussing it more because right. this is new for, for everybody that's here. The motion was adopted five in favor, zero against, and one abstention. Um, and I, if you have any questions right now, I'd be glad to answer yeah, Gene I, and further explain. Gene, yeah, maybe you can you can elaborate a little bit on a conservation easement. What that is, what mm -hmm. parts of it may be, mm -hmm. what goes into thinking, what anything about it. I'll try, but I it's a little bit uncomfortable to to be at that stage right now because that's a decision that would have to be a town meeting. Mm -hmm. It would have to be a vote of everyone. So, I mean, as long as we're only talking about the recommendation. Correct. Um, if, if, you t if you've studied the natural resources there, um, that's clearly the highest and best use of that land. And I guess, I guess just as, as a couple of um, starting points, Land that is preserved, um, <coughs> it's not like saying, we're going to give this up and we're never going to use it. It's simply that you're going to say what you're using it for. So with Brody South, um, if you'd walked it, if you really know the land, you would understand that it is uh, a very poor candidate for most kinds of development. It's extremely, the terrain is extremely uneven. There's tremendous ledge there. It's watershed land, meaning that whatever would be done there has a whole nother layer of controls that the state puts on because it's drinking water. So we're, we're not, we shouldn't start out with the, with the idea that, oh my God, this is a tremendously valuable asset that New Hartford has and we're giving it up. No, rather what we're doing is we are using the asset for the whole town in the best way that the land is telling us. So number one, um, we're not giving up tremendous developable parcel. And um, number two, even if we were to develop pay, build a structure on the front part, that would be extremely expensive because of the same reasons, because it's watershed land, because you're required to make sure that you have very expensive stormwater treatment for any runoff from that front part. I think Rick knows that from his, his study. But let me go back to your question. A conservation easement simply means a legal document which says what, what the um, owners, the town, um, want that land to be used for. And um, we have a conservation easement on Jones Mountain, we have a conservation easement on Beulah. And, um, you know, before we ever got to that stage of the game, this whole decision, let's say, you know, when we sound
and going back through town records, I did find the selectman's minutes from 85 or 86 when the property was purchased. And in fact, at the time, <coughs> Brody South was bundled with Brody North because that's the only way that the Brodies were going to sell the property. And the town, in, in the minutes of the selectman's meeting, they really didn't have a whole lot of interest in Brody South. Their, their thoughts were, well, let's go ahead and buy this, and maybe at a later date we can sell it. Um, I think we've kind of gotten past that, but the property is still in an R2 zone, and there are no restrictions on it. So the town, at this point, could sell it for development. And I think that was, that was one of our goals on this, this committee, was to try to preserve what we saw as a valuable asset to this town from being developed in the future. Now, since 86, the 40 years I've been here, there have been a number of groups that have approached Brody South to put some form of protection on it because, as Rick pointed out, it is wide open. It's a simple deed. You can do anything you want to do. And all of those groups fell apart. And when we started this, I just didn't want to let it go until we came up with some recommendation. And hopefully this commission will be on board with moving this forward and doing something. In the past, there have been a number of groups that have gotten together to do something. And because of the pressure from various organizations, um, they've just walked away from it. Um, so that's why we stayed together and did it. I would venture to say that an awful lot of people in town think it's preserved. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just, just because it's there and it's, right. you know, in its natural state. And I mean, the other thing, if you look at it from a natural resource point of view, preserved land is sure not wasted. Yeah. I mean, preserved land is doing so many things for us. The scientists call it ecosystem services, but it's cleaning our air. It's cleaning our water. It's providing habitat for immense amounts of, of <coughs> wildlife that in turn do things that benefit us. So, you know, it, it's an asset. And it's a very, very valuable asset. Absolutely. Um, if you've never hiked the trails since fall's a good time to do it, I would really encourage you to do that because you will be amazed. It's quite, quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, the subcommittee was, was charged with a lot, and I can, I can tell you from attending probably 8 or 9% of the meetings, there was a lot of time and energy and thought that went into this. Um, it's just not one piece. It's, as, as Dan just uh, read off, there's, there are several pieces to this, and it, it's something that the Recreation Commission should take seriously and just not <clears throat> rubber stamp or reject or, or do any of those things. I think that <clears throat> as a commission, we should, we should read through it thoroughly. We should ask questions. Um, you know, Gene obviously is a valuable resource for this. Dan has, has been very involved, and so has Rick uh, and Allison as well. Um, you know, feel free to ask them questions, send them emails, whatever you want. I suggest that you all read this, read it thoroughly, comprehend it. We suggest, we, I, what I'd like to do is discuss it more thoroughly at the next meeting after you've had a chance to read it. Um, it's not it's not something that I think we should just read and then vote on at the next meeting I think we should have input all of us should have input on it, what our thoughts are uh, any changes to it any questions to it um, and then and then come up with our recommendation um, it could be all of it it could be parts of it it could be additions to it um, and but I think we should thoroughly think it out and then Gene says says as far as I, I know the next step is then for us to make a recommendation, whatever whatever it may be, pass it on to the Board of Selectmen, and then it goes from there. Um, but uh, in order to make any kind of change up there, it is it is a it is a town vote, which it should be. So, um, unless any of you have any questions or any input uh, from any of you folks that were not in any of these meetings, um, again, I suggest you you read it, mark it up, make comments, questions so that we all can discuss this uh, more comprehensively, more completely. The whole report is <coughs> on our website, Northwest Conservation. Mm -hmm. It's also on the, um, is anybody here from the? Well, you have, I think everybody got one last. Did everybody last yeah. No, a couple of folks. Yeah. If you didn't, I could get some ideas. <coughs> and you know, 
the one thing that, that I'd like to say on behalf of the study committee is what an exceptional experience that sub subcommittee was. I mean, we had folks that on the face of things wouldn't agree. I mean, came from really different angles. And by the time we got finished, there was a genuine listening and learning from each other and a, a genuine consensus. So that was very, yeah. very nice. She's 100% accurate. <laughs> <laughs> she is. Yeah. It, was, it was pretty interesting. And it was over a two-year period of time. And, you know, and thanks to Dan for heading it up. Um, yeah. You know, it's a lot, it was a lot of time on his part. So. And Mr. Chairman, and this is uh, from the point of view of, of Open Space Commission. Um, if, if, if I were to characterize the, the standing of the Open Space Commission right now, I would say um, we've been extremely sensitive to not pushing for preservation of a property which there is controversy about. In other words, that's not the way you want to start. <laughs> you know, when we preserved Jones Mountain, I think there was a fairly broad consensus in town that, wow, that's a great place and we all believe we want it to stay like it is, you know. Um, and so if there's some plan for football to have a good home, you know, prior to preserving Brody, to me, or to the Open Space Commission, that would be the best um, solution. Right. So that then we get past this conflict right. and different different interest groups. Because that's not the spirit mm -hmm. we want to do it in. Right. No, I think everybody came together on this. It did work very well. Any other comments, questions, input? <laughs> okay. Thank you guys, they're all involved. Appreciate it. Okay, then. Your game for four, five, and six. All right. That's terrible. All right. Going right down the list here, we have the expenditure uh, budget. We're three months uh, into the year. Uh, not many problems there. Uh, one line item that you see is uh, overspent, but that's. Uh, a line item that's not under our control. That's the seasonal help for maintenance. That's the, pretty much the uh, the road crew, and they, they're pretty much done around this time. So, but any questions on the? Moving right along. Senator Dennis and Annie worked pretty well on this on our on that budget. So they're. They're in touch with each other on a regular basis. To right now. We've been talking about a way to uh, recognize the 25th <coughs> anniversary of the acquisition of Brody Park. And on New Hartford Day, what we plan to do is uh, recognize uh, some of the people uh, that participated in that process, namely Anita Baxter and the Board of Selectmen at that time, around 85, 86. And... Um, Initially, we talked about putting her name on the building, and that uh, went in another direction. So we came up with another idea, and that was to uh, uh, get a bronze plaque. <coughs> and um, you can see the inscription that's going to go on the plaque. And we found this big 10,000-pound rock and moved it over by the uh, uh, tennis court. My back is hurt. <laughs> <laughs> So we, yeah, it was, yeah, it was tough. Um, so we're going to take that bronze plaque on New Hartford Day, and we're going to put that on that big. It's a ten thousand pound rock, so we'll never be able to move that. And um, again, again. <laughs> okay. So we're going to have Anita and uh, I think a couple of these other guys. Skip Rogers, uh, he'll be there. Uh, I'm not sure if Leo and Andrew will be there, but. Um, we couldn't come up with all the names. We tried for months and months. These guys couldn't remember all the names. So we, um, th that's why you see all the dedicated volunteers, uh, blah, blah, blah. So uh, we're going to do it around 1 o'clock at New Hartford Day. We're going to uh, have Anita say a few words. Dr. Brody will be there. He'll say a few words about, you know, the acquisition of the park. Uh, we have a slideshow uh, that will take place inside of Berkshire Hall. And... Um, Slideshow. I know nobody 
the slideshows anymore, but um, uh, one of the guys who helped uh, with that park presentation put this together. He lives out in Denver, and he uh, put it together and mailed it down here. I think it's Rick Carter, right? Rick Carter, yeah. yeah. Rick Carter uh, put that together, so we have to have somebody sit there, and as, the, uh, as they hear the beat, press the button <laughs> for, <laughs> for the next slide. That's what it's called. So we... <laughs> So we're going all the way back to what, 82, I think. So yeah, this, guys, is, this is real important, guys. I mean, to recognize the 25th anniversary of, of you know, what, what is deemed to be the jewel of the Northwest Corner, I think is extremely important. And where the rock is going to sit, it's as you, you, know, you pull into the parking lot and you go through the little chain link fence there, it's sitting right there. So anybody that enters the park sees it. Um, rather than have it up by Berkshire Hall or hidden somewhere in the park, you know, it's at the main entrance, and it and it can't be seen. I, I think it's just, uh, I think it's a, it's a great event actually. And, and just to add one more thing to this, you know, some of the stuff that I found out while you know researching this, um, you know, the state they was they were laying in wait, they were ready to uh, purchase the park. They actually, I was told that they were here with a contract <coughs> and waiting uh, to get it signed. They were right here if you know the town didn't you know buy the park, they were ready to. Cole. They were ready to Yeah. Uh, no, you got it. Cole. Who's that? Yeah. He was Cole an activist out of Heritage Beach. He uh, was, he was a very strong activist. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big time. Yeah. Really? Uh, but obviously, a lot of work went into ones to acquiring that piece of property. Need it was instrumental. And Dr. and Mrs. Brody were instrumental. They, they could have sold it to anybody else and got more money. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but they were determined to have it be part of New Hartford. So, no. worked out well. Uh, next, we have uh, another opportunity. Um, Berkshire Hall, the front and the back porch, uh, it's kind of loose right now. You you know jump up on it. You know depending how much you weigh, you feel like you're gonna <laughs> go right through it. So I had the uh, building inspector come up, and you can see the scope of work that that he has uh, provided. So uh, I think the next step is to find a couple of guys to um, uh, look at the front and the back porch. Do we have any idea what this might cost us? Uh, not offhand, no. He, he just you know, got this to me a couple of days ago. Uh, it depends. If we... Uh, replace the whole thing, you're talking a lot of money. Yeah, if you replace for, the whole thing, yeah, a lot of money. Uh, if you replace where some of the holes, that is, there's some holes starting to wear uh, into the porch, and um, I mean, that definitely has to be replaced. So it all depends on which way we go, replacing yeah. the whole porch or... Replacing. Uh, well, it's important that we preserve that building, obviously, and and get to it. Um, did you did you attend a meeting last week um, with excess money or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, can, I, I, can I ask you to comment? The on board that? of selectmen had last their last meeting. I went to, um, as you have been going to a lot of them. Apparently, the um, Browns Corner according to the selectmen, is all done except the handicap access from the parking area to the field area, which is substantially lower. They have a bid for $17,000 to set up the handicap access, making the ramps. Um, and it appears as though they're going through with that. Prior to that expense, they had allocated $90,000 during the last budget cycle, not this one, to finish Brown's Corner. Prior to expending the 17,000, they had 57,000 of the 90 left. So after they spend the 17,000, they will have 40,000 of the $90,000 budget left. The road project on Steel Road, when they, when they did uh, one of the uh, cuts for the um, piping under the road, they discovered that there was no gravel, there was no bedrock in the road. It's all, it's built on gravel, dirt, not even gravel. Right. So they wanted to put stone down. So it was going to cost $40,000 $44, more to finish steel road than they had budgeted. So they decided it would be a good idea because in addition to the handicapped area, the first selectman would like to repave the, the basketball court. And he is very concerned about the shortage of water. And I pointed out again to them that that happened during a you know, a really dry summer, but he wants to put in two 100, there's currently, I guess, a 40-gallon storage tank up there. 
and he wants to put in two 150 gallon storage tanks so that perhaps the well won't run dry again. Um, so he wants a little bit of money for that. So they allocated 30,000 of the remaining 40 to the steel road project and left 10 grand in the Brown's Corner project to pave the basketball court and put in these two 150 gallon storage tanks for the well. Um, so the money that they had indicated, were there any left, we would be able to use it for projects is rebuilding steel road. Okay. Can we play basketball today? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, I, let, Dennis, let's do this. Let's let's see if we can't call a few contractors and find out what what these uh, what the scope of work is going to cost mm -hmm. up there. Ed Smith, hmm? Ed Smith, Ed Smith. Um, and he can give us an idea. I might get a conflict, but um, but I, I think we should I think we should get estimates on this and and. Uh, obviously, the building inspector thought that these these were repairs that definitely something that should be done need to be done ASAP. Um, so uh, let's let's get that, and then we'll uh, we'll approach the board of selectmen um, for the for the funds to hopefully get this done quickly. Since we're on that subject, um, I went back down to Callahan Park, and in early spring there was some activity down there that. I didn't think belonged there. It appeared to be some kind of race course or something on the Callahan Park. When you drive in in the flatter area, is clearly was well, actually the fire department property. It's not the town property. The fire department owns it. The old railroad bed is what that higher area is between the park and Cottage Street. To the best of my understanding of all the maps I've looked at, the, the fire department also owns that railroad bed, and on the top of that railroad bed is where all the activity was. First selectman went down, talked with the individual, and apparently it was one of those remote control race car tracks, and they had races up there. Um, and they took down all the wooden things that appeared to be really dangerous. So I stopped there tonight. No one's cleaned it up. There's a lot of brush. There's a lot of four by eight pieces of plywood. There's rubber tires. Um, he built a stone part, so I guess they're four wheel drive and they could bounce up the stones. That's still there. And the jumps and stuff have been removed but now there's clearly a racetrack up there and a couple of chairs and a couple of fire pits. So the neighbors, or at least one, maybe more, are clearly using that area. So if either, if this commission feels either John or Dennis, I, I would hope would approach the selectmen and see how to clean that area up. Um, and I mean, it makes no sense to put a fence between our property line and the neighbors, but I don't know how else to prevent them from using it as their own private race car track. In it, in it, I don't use the park on a regular basis, but I can understand that the people that do would wonder what's going on up there, and it appears as though it's not our property. It appears as though it's his. Um, I think it's something that, that we really need to clean up, though, because that is part of our property. All right, I'll, uh I'll talk to Dan uh, tomorrow. If I know, I don't want to take care. Oh, we can't, can't do it. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what jurisdiction we have, authority we have. I'm sure the board of selectmen does. Uh, something more than we do. But, um, well, it's one yeah. of the parks that we super. No, no, I understand. And I think that yeah. we need to, as that, from that perspective, we need to get it cleaned up. And right. whether Dan does it, I think we, the police yeah. officer down to talk to him or whatever. Let's do that. Yeah, I think it needs to be cleaned up. It's a nice little park. I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> uh, moving right along, we uh, we're actually still using uh, water uh, up at Brody Park. So here's the uh, meter reading. Don't, don't be stupid. Tell me what all this means. <laughs> Does anybody know? At the, yeah, the difference between the two figures is the amount of water you use. Now, at that same meeting, Dan indicated there's a huge drop-off in usage, and he felt it was a result, like from up at the top, from July 27th to August 3rd last year, there was 24,000 
gallons of water used. The last week of August this year, there was only 3,000 gallons used. So certainly there was either a leak plug or the waterless yeah. toilets are just plain amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the drop from 24,000 gallons to 3,000. You got any experience with that? Somebody will have to force it on. <laughs> All month. Yeah. And what, what, what is you going to plan to do with this process? Uh, right now, we're just going to keep tracking it until. This is the is, yeah. is, is that is that drop off consistent from one week to another, yeah. from one year to another? Yeah, the week before last year went from 116 to 143, so that's what, 28,000 gallons. The week before this year went from 81 to 83, so that's 2,000 gallons. It's what, 2,000% drop? <laughs> Well, I think well, Dennis, Dennis doesn't allow the kids to use the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what yeah. They're using so the wood these days? Yeah, yeah, well, I guess, I guess the, the question woods. I would have would be, Huge. What, aside from changing out toilets, what other plumbing work was done? Well, you can see that the, the difference here is in August of 2011, the 24th to September 7th, is when it started to maintain just a, an even flow, so to speak. Right. So, it was well, a, you look it was, at camp it was this in August. year, yeah. and there's no dramatic there's no increase. increase. It's, it's all been three, still three thousand gallons a week. So two, two to three thousand gallons. Whatever you did in August of 2011, good job. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, they, they also, and one of the things I suggested to the selectman's office is that they wait a year because they install these waterless toilets down at Brown's mm -hmm. Corner. And if they have that kind of drop off down there too, yeah, I don't we'll see any need well, for we'll water. We'll huh? we'll we'll and I don't mean waterless, low flush. Low flow. Right, I'm sorry. All right, we have another opportunity. <laughs> um, we approved this guy, what, a couple months ago to do the paint job, and uh, then he came back and said he after we had get, given them the bid, and said he underbid it by what, eight, nine hundred bucks. Yep. So we still decided to go with him. So he booked the date to do the job and uh, hasn't done the job. And um, so we're still just hanging around. Uh, got the other quotes in there. I think at this point we need to just go with somebody else. Uh, we haven't signed any contracts. The guy just. Hasn't been able to uh, meet our needs. The um, <clears throat> the third one down. Haynes. Uh, Greg Haynes. Yeah, yeah. Greg Haynes. Is uh, that that one's what thirty what? Thirty three plus. Thirty six all together. Thirty six. Yeah, at the bottom he got the hmm? updated the totals on the very bottom. bottom. In the middle. Yep. Okay. And we gave the job to the New Hartford person who was 38, right? For right. $200 more. Right. Okay. What's the What's the latest you heard from him? Uh, he came up <laughs> about a week ago. Um, he looked around for about a half hour and said, I'll be right back. He <laughs> 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 didn't tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, uh, my, here's my suggestion: is we you, you give him a call and you have a, kind of a couple of Jesus meeting with him. Yeah. Say, listen, we we need a, Here's our deadline. Pick a deadline. How do you want to down payment? Yeah. Pick a deadline, whatever you want, and uh, unless you just want to go. Unless you just want to give Dennis the you know the authority to just go with the third bid down. Well, I think rather than wait another month. Well, we're not going to wait a month. Well, well to give Dennis the authority, yeah. no. I think yeah. what we do is we just yeah. say, yeah. at his discretion, right. you either point. use the guy that we That's first brought, yep. or you have the authority to use the first guy or the third guy. Or the third guy, Greg whatever he wants. Okay. I make a motion that Dennis has. The authority to choose to Second. either engage 
Between Dennis Feeney or Gregory Haynes. Gregory, Gregory Haynes. Haynes to your, your Haynes, Berkshire Hall. Your discretion, your time frame, or whatever. Yes. All right. As soon as possible. In your All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. All right, moving right along. Moving right along. We uh, we ended the year pretty, the summer, we ended the summer pretty pretty good. If you look at the uh, uh, program account balance right now, we have a 110,000 uh, to date right now. And the summer payroll was just under $100,000. And uh, the website did pretty good for us. We, we kind of, uh, we got a lot of people to visit the website and use the website, which was, like I said, worked really well, except for we still not using the uh, credit card component, which once we get that, then we'll be hitting all cylinders. So right now, we still have about $7,000 uh, in receivables, and uh, we can collect that. Uh, we'll be somewhere under 20 grand. We'll end the season uh, somewhere with 20 grand uh, in the bank. Take, take a look at the, um, the camp numbers, guys. From 2006 to 2012, we went from 710 to 1,221. Mm -hmm. That's about, what, 80% increase. Um, and la what was it last year? Is, is it every year we had nine weeks? Uh, we, started, no, we started in 08. 08, yeah. And then it grew and grew and grew. Look at it, look at it in 08 when the first year we had week nine. And look at this year, we had week 9, 114 to 110. And we're about 70% campers over last year. That's a success, guys, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So, and obviously, the, the money is greater than it was last year. That's, that's a good thing. Um, and tickets, stickers, we had a little bit more than last year, pretty much the same. Yeah. Pretty much, pretty yeah. much the same couple. Uh, five thirteen last year. Yeah, five uh, twenty eight. Five twenty eight this year. Okay. Non-resident was less this year than last year. Oh, okay. no, from price. Yep. I'll bet you if you look at the price difference, we actually made money because we went down yep. thirteen residents, mm -hmm. thirteen people, for stickers. But if you look at our price jump, I'll bet you we yep. made more money with forty three non-residents yep. than we did with fifty six. Yep. And 12 out of 13 moorings and 38 out of 42. Is that how I read this? Mm-hmm. Good. Okay. We have a couple of uh, special events coming up where you know, we're trying to put some more money in the account to help with our, our campership program. And the golf tournament is what we have planned. We booked uh, June 21st at Blue Fox Run. And... As you can see, we got a couple of guys already agreed to get some foursomes. Uh, Dan Janko, uh, John's gonna uh, get a foursome, Charlie's. So the goal is to get 25 foursomes, and we're, we're trying to raise about 10 grand uh, for this golf tournament. And I think if uh, we do 25 foursomes and, and work on the T sponsors and uh, get some of the sponsorship that we're working on, we certainly can do uh, 10 grand. Um, I know football and soccer plays golf, so I'll be calling those guys <laughs> for force. Whether you play golf or not. <laughs> Ditto. Um, you just, you know, I, I've been, uh, I've done a charity golf tournament for over 20 years, and uh, uh, these things usually get ramped up about two months before. But, you know, talk it up a little bit uh, between now and then, but certainly in the spring, we're going to start pushing hard to get people to play. And it is fun, by the way. Uh, one we did have, how many years ago was it? Oh, it's probably about nine years ago. Yeah, Dennis brought in a ringer group. <laughs> uh, next month we have the uh, panel on obesity that's going to be up at Berkshire Hall. And um, you see, we got a good panel here. Um, like you said, the principal, we got a psychologist, fitness instructor. Um, so. I'm hoping that we get a, a good crowd there because it's certainly a problem all over the place, obesity. And we're gonna uh, you know, give these guys a lot of information they can use uh, moving forward. So that's gonna be uh, October 18th. That's on a Thursday night. We have it publicized anywhere? All over the place, yeah. It's uh, 
it's on the website. We're going to do an email blast. We're going to send it through the schools. Um, so it's all over the place. The principal, uh, yeah, the principal, he's going to put it on their website. Okay. So we, uh, so we should get a good turnout. There. Can we have a virtual? Yep, yeah, right at virtual. And another event that we're going to do in April, the volunteer recognition reception. You know, we do this uh, every few years when we try to recognize all of our volunteer groups in town. And we're going to do this at Berkshire Hall. And again, that's a Thursday night uh, at Berkshire Hall. And Dr. Brody, uh, he'll be there uh, that night and he'll say a few words. And it's a good time. We usually have a good time here. So. Rock in the Park. Uh, we, we tried to do this uh, last uh, September, but it wasn't a good time. And usually, uh, a Rock in the Park is good around April, or May. So we're going to do it in May. And we, it, it's an event for, for your dog. You know, whatever event you can think of 100 yard dash, ugliest dog, a dog that looked like me, whatever the event may be, we're going to, you, you can see some of the events right there. So we opened it. Hoping to get a, a good turnout. And your dog has to be licensed. You can't just run a flea bag at the fair. <laughs> 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 well, flea bags can be dog board. Dog board will be there. Right. <laughs> He's going to be a judge. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have a flea bag, it doesn't mean you can't come in. And <laughs> hey, we talked about the website. This is just a, a snapshot. Uh, in July, the, the number of hits that we we got from the website. You see we had over 1,300 visitors, uh, <coughs> unique visitors, 986. That's just that one person who used that one computer and uh, dialed into us. Um, page views, 6,600. Um, the bounce rate, that's uh, when a guy just goes to the site, or girl goes to the site, and they may just look at it for a couple of seconds, just boom, and get out. Maybe they're looking for a phone number or just some piece of information. So it's just a quick hitter. And uh, we had 61% of those were new visits. So the website's been uh, doing pretty good. And to piggyback off of that, we, we were able to save about $3,000 this fall by, we, we're doing a little scaled down version just for the fall see how that goes this is be this will be the brochure you get in the mail probably Saturday morning and um, just has a couple of the uh, couple of special events in there and gave you a little bookmark you can put on your refrigerator to remind you about all the classes that we have and we're just directing you to that's the website idea. so we're trying to I'm going to that's more effective than that yep big brochure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're interested, then you can go find it, as opposed to having to read five pages to find all these things. That's a great idea. Yeah, well done. Right, you should get that in the mail Saturday. And uh, I think the uh, Giants are playing the Cowboys at 845. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and the Yanks are already on. Yeah, they have season okay. over. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Okay. Um, anything new with um, waterfront? Anything new with management trees? Um, uh, trees. Tree there, there, uh, there are a lot of dead trees in the park. Um, Dan and I uh, rode around the golf cart the other day, and he acknowledged that there were some <laughs> dead trees. Dead germs. Yeah, dead germs <laughs> in the park. Uh, uh, he has twenty thousand dollars in his budget for the whole town for trees. And that's kind of where we left it. <laughs> <laughs> tree. Well, do we do we have any do, do we have any trees that need immediate care? Um, there's some trees that you know pretty tall with some dead limbs, and the limbs have you know been coming down. So uh, at, at a minimum, we may need some trees. We may need to trim some of these limbs because uh -huh. they're falling down on top of do cars. A, or yeah, put a uh, priority list together if, if you would. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Widowmaker, so to speak. It, it's probably anywhere from four to five thousand dollars worth of worth of uh, tree work that needs to be done. Okay. About four or five grand. 
Um, two things. One, we're in a new budget year, so we can allocate. So we've now got some capital improvement funds available to us based on our request. The other thing, on this account balance of 19, because I don't remember what's in the cap capital budget after Dan got done with it. Um, so I don't think there's any. But since we're in a new fiscal year, can you push, suggest to Dan about getting the, the charge card stuff for, for the computer? Getting charge card on Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Whether right. we need to use some of this 19 or maybe part of our capital budget was, I think, yeah. I recall he said that you'll have to wait till the next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, you know, you've done such a good job with that. And it will make collections even easier for you. Well, it doesn't cost people. anything to get the, you know, it doesn't cost much anything to get the charge card. Thank oh, you. okay. So that's. So I think maybe we ought to, you know, move forward okay. on that and see if we can get yeah. a commitment out of them to do it. The town hall does it. Yep. And they just got all excited about well, all their new program. Will it allow you sports to, can they utilize it too or no? There, there's a component where we can uh, set up where you sports could. Yeah, we, could we already have a charge are. card okay. attached to our, uh, our computerized system. Um, it's very simple to do, you do the PayPal. Yeah. It's depending on what system you're using. And mm -hmm. okay. It costs you on a percentage basis, but looking at your overall receipts, it really doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. Um, we would probably have to do it on our own because we have our own bank account. So yeah. if people are using their yeah. card here at Town Hall, then we got to have Town yeah. write us checks. Yeah. So okay. don't make any sense. Yep. But at the last next the two two selectmen meetings ago, the selectmen said that they've got it down in tax collector's office and everywhere else in Town Hall that people can use charge cards. Oh yeah, but they you know, they charge your big time. Well, they charge you the two percent because they instead of them absorbing in the, in the way we wrote our agreement for people to go online mm -hmm. was that there will be a service fee charged so that we don't get the rec commission doesn't take the hit on the two percent we pass that along to the user and that's what town hall does but i mean town hall is all excited about them being able to use it i don't know why we can't add it to ours too if they got it Press it. okay anything else uh just the last thing, uh, vandalism in the park still uh, there's still a still a little bit of that going on. Um, it, it's been dark, you know. It's been hard to we look at the camera. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. Just just the, your regular um, uh, the skate park fence, you know, it's kind of ripped apart again. We fixed that up at one point. And now it's a couple of cars I guess smashed into it at some point. Um, then we had a car take out one of the signs. So it's still some kids coming up at, or whoever coming up at night. Somebody with a driver's license coming up at night. And, uh, you know. You know, the, the state police, because we were having people do donuts down at Brown's Corner, they've got some uh, tree cameras mm -hmm. that have, um, they can take good pictures at night. And you just, you just strap it up on a tree and it'll take pictures. And, and he, he asked, he said, you know, we don't use them all the time if you guys want to use them. So I would check with the police department. Okay. Um, you know, we, we have to put a security system in our business. I can go at home on my computer and pick up all the cameras and it's recording them too. We got like eight, eight cameras in the office, the shop, outside the equipment. And I can believe you if you had that same system, you could watch it at home. The, the camera that we have right yeah. now can do that, but it, it's just some of the stuff they're doing is just right outside of the camera. Like you, you know, it's just just missing it. So if we had a another camera, we can see it, but we're just missing what's what's going on. So. Ours are nighttime too. Call, uh, call the police. Yeah, I'll, I'll check what yeah. check what those guys. Help us out. Now. Right. Anything else? That's it. I make a motion. Favor. Thanks, folks. Um, what are your responsibilities? Just to make sure we're not breaking your parents' genders.